there is an expression that um, some people achieve greatness uh, while others have greatness thrust upon them. Uh, hello, everyone, um, and to all the people who are fans of the International Urban and Regional Cooperation Programme. Uh, my name is uh, Ronnie Hall. Uh, I am recently retired from the Director General for uh, Regional and Urban Policy of the European uh, Commission. And uh, I have had an involvement from the beginning in this Director General's um, uh, activities in international cooperation involving directly the representatives of the cities and the regions. Brilliant, and thank you so much for coming to speak with us uh, today and, and shed some light on this program. So uh, uh, maybe you can tell us then, what are the origins um, of this program uh, in your directorate? And, and what is DG Regio trying to achieve through it? Well, there is an expression that um, some people achieve greatness uh, while others have greatness thrust upon them. And to some extent, I would say that uh, DG Regio had greatness thrust upon us because we found, uh, this is going back 20 years, that many uh, major countries from outside um, the European Union, I'm talking about uh, China, Brazil, Russia, when uh, they negotiated policy dialogues with uh, the European Union, one of the sectors that they included in their shortlist of uh, topics for this discourse was, uh, well, it was described variously, such as regional policy, policy to, to reduce territorial uh, disparities, uh, policies to um, improve sustainable urban development. So we actually found that from the outside, there was this desire on the part of countries outside the EU to have a discourse with the European Union on the, 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 these policy fields. I think it's something to do with the uh, reputation of EU uh, regional and urban policy acquired, uh, particularly since reforms introduced uh, in 1989 uh, onwards, and many countries from outside uh, the EU were very interested in the methodology for these policies to reduce uh, territorial disparities. Uh, this led in uh, 2006 to the signing of a memorandum of understanding uh, with China uh, between the Commissioner for Regional Policy uh, in the European Commission and the, um, the, the Minister for Regional um, Development in China. And after that, there were uh, another 13 agreements signed. And uh, we have in total uh, 14, half of which are with Latin American countries. Um, so it, it has kind of ballooned uh, since then. What is Regio trying to achieve through this? Well, I, I mean, we are major advocates of the need for uh, territorial uh, justice uh, and for territorial uh, development. And uh, we have been now 30 years in this business. And uh, of course, we think that we have, uh, on the one hand, uh, a lot of uh, ideas to share. We have a lot of good and bad practices to share with other countries uh, across the world. And of course, through international cooperation, we have a wonderful opportunity to learn about approaches being adopted in other parts of the world. Fantastic, very clear. So that's something that was um, something that we were we were doing well. Other other countries saw it, and they really wanted in on the action. Um, and the feeling is that we can learn from them uh, as well as vice versa. Absolutely, brilliant. And uh, you've been in this um, long, long before this program was set up. Um, what, what, what's your personal uh, role at present? How are you involved yeah. in the international cooperation? Yeah. Well, as you say, I was a founder member of international cooperation 
uh, within the Director General for Regional Policy. I suppose we can trace it back to the uh, the 2006 Memorandum of Understanding that we signed uh, with, with China. And um, then uh, as the years progressed, we found that we had a lot of support from the European Parliament who, uh, with the uh, flexibility they have under the EU budgetary system, uh, granted what were called pilot projects and preparatory actions uh, with a small amount of financing to help us develop these activities. But the real uh, moment came when in 2016, uh, the decision was taken to create uh, the International Urban Cooperation Programme, which has now become the International Urban and Regional uh, Cooperation Programme, which have essentially marked the moment when uh, this area of activity became fully integrated into the external priorities of the European Union. Uh, my role in this activity is to um, assist the colleagues in DG Regio because uh, many people know it's an extremely small uh, team. So I have taken on the role of what is called in commission speak uh, active senior, which means that I can support uh, the colleagues in uh, developing work, for example, at the end of uh, 2020, uh, I, I helped to develop uh, a detailed study on the prospects for regional innovation uh, exchanges between the EU and China in the current uh, period. I've also represented the programmes in conferences and meetings uh, with representatives of uh, both cities and regions of the EU on the one hand and their counterparts uh, on the other. Super, and I, and I know um, uh, from my experience as well with China that having some, ha having a, a long-standing uh, contact is something really important for some international col collaboration as well. Yes, um, the the continuity is important, uh, and uh, where there is not continuity, be it on our side in the European Union or be it on the side of the. The, the the country outside the EU with which we're cooperating, we find that where there are frequent changes of personnel, the cooperation is definitely a bigger challenge. Mm. Um, so as the creator of this uh, international urban and regional cooperation program, uh, how do you see its role among the myriad of different um, international activities of the of the EU? Well, um, the one thing that I would say about regional policy uh, and urban policy compared to many other sectors uh, is that it ticks all the boxes with regard to what the European Union is trying to achieve in its relationship with um, countries outside the EU. In other words, in its in its diplomatic um, activities. Uh, for example, if you take the three broad priorities of external uh, action policy, um, uh, the first is to understand um, EU policy priorities and programs uh, and uh, definitely uh, having an understanding across the world about EU regional policy and, and, and its principles of territorial justice, uh, participation by the actors on the ground, a focus on uh, promoting uh, growth and employment. These are, this is an extremely uh, useful um, area that ticks the boxes with regard to the EU's uh, priorities huh, and its values. It also uh, ticks the box of um, promoting people-to-people uh, -people relationships, which again is a priority of external relations. Uh, for example, you see that in the, um, in the International Urban Cooperation Programme, inter uh, International Urban and Regional Cooperation Programme, now in, in, in the very close relationship that we are establishing uh, between uh, universities and between uh, uh, business actors, as well as between uh, public authorities. And thirdly, uh, regional policy makes a contribution to uh, the priority of the European Union, which is to promote trade and uh, under international urban cooperation and now under IURC, we insist that there is a business 
aspect, a business development aspect, and that business representatives are involved in the activities in order to promote uh, cooperation, collaboration, uh, to exchange ideas, uh, perhaps um, uh, undertake joint research or uh, finance the development of, of, of new products, uh, for example, such as um, vehicle uh, battery technology, which is a, a particular example under the previous actions. So um, that is for me, for me the value of having regional policy in external relations. It ticks the boxes on the key priorities of the European Union. Right, it seems like it's a knot that's uh, tying a lot of different things together in one bundle. Yes, uh, th that's it. I, I, it's it's something to do with the sort of uh, comprehensive nature of uh, regional policy, because uh, it's it's different from the other policies such as transport, environment, research and development, in the sense that it is a, the delivery system for these policies. So you have this integrated overview, which is extremely useful, I think, when it comes to uh, international diplomacy. Brilliant. Um, now, some people make, might take um, the opposite view. They say they look around at the global pandemic at the moment and they say, well, look, here's the consequence of globalization. We're all locked in our homes. Uh, um, how is how's the I, IURC going to show that this international co op, co uh, connectedness has got um, added value even in moments like this? Um, I would say that um, the value of I, IURC um, was demonstrated most clearly uh, after we were hit by the pandemic. Uh, it was almost immediately uh, from the beginning of 2020, say from February, March onwards, when uh, we began to organize our uh, video conferences, which met with a lot of determination and a lot of enthusiasm uh, on uh, all sides, even though uh, this new world of looking at each other through screens was not uh, by any means easy at the beginning. But what happened was that the uh, participants on both sides, EU and outside EU, began immediately to see how the program could be used to um, address the new challenges brought about by the pandemic. Essentially, uh, we had a discussion uh, which you could divide into two um, areas. One is um, how can we actually promote actions to improve the quality of life of our citizens in the um, in, in the context of of uh, the pandemic and and lockdowns and so on. And secondly, how can we preserve the gains which are being brought about by the pandemic? such as, for example, the new concern with sustainable development in, 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 in the urban setting, you know, the, the, the pop-up cycle lanes, uh, the concern with nature and protecting the, um, the cultural uh, heritage, how to redesign uh, resident, residential buildings so that they are, are more comfortable for people who have to work uh, at home and so on and so forth. So we, we had uh, the, this two-pronged attack. On the one hand, what new actions do we need uh, to promote? And secondly, how can we promote uh, the, 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 um, the, the, the spin-offs from the pandemic in terms of uh, what it has done to the environment? Got you absolutely. So, which is a which is also a, a global is issue that requires yeah. a global solution. Yeah. Um, this um, just following on from that. I mean, you gave a few nice concrete examples of things that cities have been assisting each other with uh, just there uh, across the globe. Um, but we know that in these um, European projects, uh, can often seem a little bit. Um, abstract and sometimes results are intangible, which in itself is not a bad thing, but it would be great if you could share a, a concrete outcome of the program that for you really shows um, in vivid terms what it is that we're trying to achieve. Yeah. I, it would be, I think, slightly unfair uh, to select uh, one concrete outcome because, um, to be honest, 
uh, there have been so many uh, good outcomes from the uh, from from the program. I mentioned the collaboration on uh, battery technology, for example, between the EU and and China. Uh, the uh, we've also had uh, exchanges of personnel between the EU and non-EU uh, countries. We have helped other countries uh, in the design of uh, regional development and urban development strategies. Uh, we have uh, brought the universities together in many cases for joint co uh, collaboration. We have seen uh, regions and cities open offices uh, mutually inside the EU on the part of uh, cities and regions from outside the EU and vice versa. So we have had many concrete outcomes uh, from, from, from the programme. As you know, it is still um, uh, a comparatively new programme and uh, we are uh, producing and putting online uh, these many particular uh, projects that have been achieved over the, uh, the last few years. Brilliant. Well, indeed, for a young programme, that sounds like no shortage of achievements. Um, you've been, uh, as we said, with the programme from, from be before its inception. Um, looking back over the years so far, and as we move into this new phase of the programme, uh, can you share a memory, something that sticks out for you when you think about uh, your personal engagement? Well, um, one of the um, w w one of the uh, things of genuine surprise to me was the sheer enthusiasm uh, that I encountered when I uh, travelled with the program, or indeed with its uh, with with the actions before the the program that were financed, as I mentioned, by uh, the support of the European uh, Parliament. The enthusiasm shown by uh, people in the regions, in the cities, uh, to work together uh, with uh, their counterparts inside the uh, European Union. There has been uh, an incredible level of, of interest, and um, uh, that certainly was uh, a very pleasant surprise for all of us who have been engaged uh, in the program. But more recently, um, it relates to something that I have already said. The um, particular uh, way in which the cities under IUC during 2020 engaged on uh, actions to help cope with the pandemic, that, that was really uh, quite amazing. We organized a large number of uh, video conferences between um, the cities on, on, on both sides. And uh, even, uh, of course, uh, with the regions, because uh, IUC, uh, as you know, also covered the relationship with Latin America in regional innovation systems. And they, they began to work concretely on ways to improve um, uh, the quality of life of citizens uh, the idea of uh, promoting social justice, which perhaps has not been so much emphasized in um, in policy for uh, recent decades, but is now rapidly changing thanks to the pandemic. Um, it was fascinating to see how the cities immediately changed gear and started to address uh, the, the pandemic, sometimes in very uh, concrete uh, forms, such as the way that um, Chinese cities uh, sent PPE equipment to their counterpart city in uh, the um, IUC program with which they were uh, in direct cooperation. So that was a, a very uh, interesting memory. I'm, I'm very interested in this personally, to be honest, because I've been reading up on the 1918 pandemic. Mm. And uh, one of the questions that is of interest to the 2020-21 pandemic is, will we just go back to normal when the pandemic is over or, or will there be genuine change? In other words, will the good things that have emerged from the pandemic uh, persist or will they just wither away and we all go back and behave exactly as we did uh, beforehand? And in the case of the 1918 
pandemic. Uh, generally speaking, I think a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, would say that after a few years, we more or less went back to uh, where we were before. The only change that I think that people point to is that we did at that time have a greater emphasis on uh, social justice, and it did give rise to, uh, but it took some time, changes in the social security system to inter in increase the level of social protection provided by public authorities, which of course was no big, it was was no small deal uh, over a hundred years ago. So I think we we need to be vigilant, and we need to use IURC uh, as a small contribution to make sure that we do not forget and that we uh, try to integrate the uh, change in our attitudes to sustainable development and to social justice that have been, uh, in a sense, forced upon us in the last 12 months or so. Brilliant. So here's to, um, here's to lasting change uh, through international action. Um, Ronald Hall, uh, Godfather of the International Urban and Regional <laughs> Cooperation Programme. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to, uh, to us today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.